what do you see as the most interesting upcoming uh, technology in the aging space? I do. Uh, ultimately, my, my co-founder, Dr. Chris Verberg, is, is a great person to uh, ask this question because he is an investor on the Longevity Vision Fund. So he gets a sneak peek behind the, you know, the, the curtain of all of these um, up and coming startups. And so he's, he's very aware of um, some, some of the more advanced biotech companies that are, are uh, being founded and what they're capable of. So my less informed perspective than his, uh, I would say I'm personally very excited about uh, the epigenome. Uh, this is oftentimes talked about by uh, Dr. Sinclair. Uh, but the, the work that's being done, not simply by him, but uh, for example, I met with in Switzerland a couple months back, uh, Professor Ocampo. Uh, Professor Ocampo, um, he's in uh, at the University of Lausanne. He did the famous study where he administered Yamanaka factors to mice and was able to extend their lifespans and uh, and do so without um, any, any cancer growths. Uh, the, the thought of what Yamanaka factors and by extension, what we can do to the epigenome and reprogramming our epigenome is extremely exciting. Uh, you know, a lot of work still needs to be done there and we'll probably take it uh, with animals first and then on an organ specific basis, like, you know, Dr. Sinclair talks about um, curing blindness potentially with it. But longer term, if we can go beyond that, I envision a future where we do an epigenetic test of organ by organ. And we see, okay, so Richard, you are overall uh, biologically 45 years old uh, and your heart is that of a 47 year old and your kidneys are that of a 39 year old, but your liver, oh boy, that's that of a 55 year old. All right, let's target the liver now with the uh, Yamanaka cocktail to now bring that back to a 35 year old, right? And we can go organ by organ as you age and just restore it to a, a younger state. I can envision a future where, where we have something like that. Yeah, that will be really interesting. Yes, and the liver is, of course, the most dangerous. Uh, so are you familiar with uh, the escape velocity of aging? And do you, do you see that as being something that's uh, going to come soon? You know, it, it's, it's a funny question because when, uh, when you ask the people who are most familiar with the research, right? Like the actual scientists, uh, most of them say we're further away from, from, you know, reversing or curing aging, uh, uh, than, than a lot of people would think at, at the same time, when, when I see like the progress that we're making, uh, I can't help, but think that it is something that is, is, is possible within our lifetimes. Like when I just mentioned Yamanaka factors, like how powerful those are. All it takes is one radical innovation or discovery where everything can suddenly change. So do I have a time frame for it? No, but do I think that it is uh, within the realm of possibility uh, to happen in the, in the coming decades? Uh, yeah, I do think it's, it's within the realm of possibility. Right, yeah, I'm kind of there too. It's like, we're not thinking about the technology as it is now. We're thinking of the technologies it will be in 30 years or 40 years. And, you know, it just seems that we should be able to achieve it within 30 years, right? Because even I'm like 60, right? But so I could easily live to, to 90, right? So that's 30 years, right? Yeah, it's, it's, the human mind isn't, isn't that capable of thinking in exponential terms, right? So when you think of technology, it's growing exponentially. As long as everything, you know, continues, uh, we don't fall into World War III. Like we, we, we think um, uh, when you look at it from an exponential perspective and the power that say AI will have in the future uh, in 20, 30 years from now, is it possible for it to run simulations and, and make discoveries uh, millions or billions of simulations in a quantum computing environment uh, that we can't even conceive of today and then make discoveries, uh, I, I think that's, that's feasible. So yeah, I think it's possible. Yep, I'm with you. Can you talk, uh, what are the kind of the next steps for Novos? So I like to describe Novos as a longevity platform. So we're not just a supplement company that, that you come across um, everywhere nowadays. Uh, there, there are three legs to our stool. So one leg is the formulations. 
And we are a nutraceutical company to that point. We, we hold ourselves up to a much higher standard than supplement companies where they're oftentimes just hearing about a hot new ingredient and then saying, let's just start selling this and packaging it up, right? Uh, we're actually conducting new research. We're advancing the field of longevity science. And we are bringing on the brightest scientific minds in the world to help us come up with our formulations. So that's the first leg to the stool. The second leg is testing. So I mentioned face age just now. Uh, we also have a survey that you can easily find on our website, uh, novoslabs.com. It's at the top of the website. It's a longevity quiz where you can get a score based on longevity research. What is your, your longevity score essentially, a higher score, the better. So you can get some insights into some things that you might not even think of for longevity. Like for example, flossing can increase your lifespan because of the uh, impact that periodontal disease can have on uh, inflammation in your body. And it can lead to things like potentially increasing the risk of Alzheimer's or cardiovascular disease if you don't have um, clean teeth, a clean mouth, right? So uh, uh, so it's an interesting, interesting quiz that we have on our website, but then we'll also be offering soon, um, I can't say when, but soon uh, some biological tests for, for your biological age, essentially. And then the third leg to the stool, this gets more to the public benefit corporation perspective that we have is we want to produce as much knowledge as possible, make as many people aware of the impact that addressing your longevity can have on your health span, most importantly, and your lifespan as well. So we have a lot of written content over a hundred articles that are scientifically referenced uh, with tips, advice, insights, and so on. And eventually we'll expand that content um, to go beyond simply the written content. We might have some videos and, and so on. 